Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafiroff, and today we are going to have a discussion all about LTV Studios. With us is Diana Ware, who is the chairman of LTV Studios. But before I introduce Diana, I want to speak a little bit about philanthropy. Did you know that absolutely anyone can be a philanthropist? Yes, it's a big word, but if you give your time, your knowledge, and available resources, you too can be a philanthropist. No one is excluded. And of course, if you don't have the money right now to give, you give your time and your knowledge, and you are a philanthropist. Welcome, Diana, and thank you so much for joining us. And Diana, before we discuss a little bit about you because you are a great philanthropist. You. Let's talk a little bit about LTV Studios. I understand it began in 1992. How did this all begin? Um, the franchise companies, the LTV companies, Cablevision, now Altice, uh, give part of their franchise fee to the municipalities to do public access. So when that happened, Fraser Doherty, who was the founder of LTV, decided that he would do it for the town and created a not-for-profit, which is LTV Inc., and started the studios. And we were first in a little studio up in Springs, and then the town gave us this land, or didn't give it, they leased the land to us at a very reasonable price, and they built these studios. The town built the studios? No, Fraser built the studios. Wonderful. The town uh, leases us the land, and then Fraser created the buildings. And, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful asset, I think, for the community. I'm very in love with being here all the time. Well, and I agree. And I understand you were a volunteer way back then. Is that correct? You yes. started, you were here when it all began. And well, what an honor to be able to interview you uh, right now. Oh, thank you so <laughs> much. So it's changed so much because as you look around or if you look on our website at The View, it's so modern and technologically updated and we can do so many things. And when we started volunteering, it was this studio, not so much equipment and fanciness, and there was a stack of video, video machines you know and we had a yes. stack of tapes and each tape was a show and it was timed and we had a timer and you had to watch and say okay this show's over click out put in the next one <laughs> I mean it was all so manual but it was fun and we felt like we were giving back to the community and in, in helping this new startup but it's grown tremendously and and look we have shows like yours now which is a wonderful wonderful asset well, thank and, you and I... highlights great great people who are doing good things so we well, thank that's you for the idea of successful philanthropy. The show is here to highlight everyone in the community and beyond who are engaged in philanthropy. Now, getting back to those days, I understand your daughter was also a volunteer. Yes, so yes she was. This, this idea of philanthropy is generational, always, and you and your daughter, I assume, are both acting philanthropists. I know you are, and I'm assuming your daughter is still yes, involved. Yes, she does, because I also, she volunteered here, and she still does when we have events, and you know, we're putting up chairs, or we all volunteer in many different ways. But uh, I'm also in Kiwanis of East Hampton, and she is also a Kiwanian now, many years later, and helps with all the events, because we raise money for children. And our, our, our focus is the children of East Hampton, helping them in whatever way we can. And what was the programming like way back then in early 90s? What kind of shows did you have on LTV? Well, Fraser Doherty, the original uh, founder, and he had this show on until he retired, used to have a morning show starting at 5 o'clock in the morning called Hello, really? Hello, and he would get on and speak about the news of the day and what was going on in the town, very, very local things. And in those days, when we started filming and accepting films and different things, we had all the artists of those years when, when the town was being really driven by the arts community. So de Kooning, de Kooning's wife, I mean, we had Elaine Benson, who had Elaine Benson Gallery, and she would interview artists. We had fishermen and farmers that were working the farms. How and interesting. Just yeah. tremendous history. So those archives are very special. We have town board meetings from 32 years ago. So it, it really is a great archive for the future. I heard you had 25,000 saved videos here in your yes. archives. <laughs> 
Have you seen most of them? Uh, no. <laughs> I do watch, and it is fun because now we've included cooking shows and, and this see, type yes. of show and, and, and shows about all different things in the community. And that's really what public access is about. Public access is allowing the public to tell us what they do and show us what they do, whether it's cooking or farming or working or school or hospital. Hospital's very high on our list. Stony Brook Southampton yes, Hospital. Yes, of course. Yes, Parish Art Museum. Yes, and I know, and I thank mm -hmm. you. You, you're wonderful with the hospital. So all those things that that people do in the community is what we want to highlight. So, in other words, one of my questions was going to be, what constitutes good local TV? And what you're saying is that good local TV is a forum for the people that live there to highlight the people and the good work that they do and then and then also to promote philanthropy and to help the the government and to help everyone i guess yes. right all but the you arts, answer it yeah. for me no you're you're <laughs> absolutely right the arts community mm -hmm. that doesn't Which have base so street theater here. you know the all the different things the sag harbor cinema we did a monday night series together with the sag harbor cinema there was a movie night so every night, nice. Sag Harbor would pick a movie and we'd show it and it was sponsored by them. So all those things, you know, they had a lot of different movies, you know, that you don't see in the regular movie theater. So it's always about what's going on in your community and how can you help highlight that and promote that. Which is really wonderful. Now you do a lot of government programming, I see, and I think that's very important. And yes. And do they come to you, or do you reach out to them, or is this just a something that you've worked on for years and years together? And I, I'm assuming it's a it's a great <laughs> service to the community because we all learn a little bit about our local government. It correct? is. Well, how it works is that the franchiser, who's the in this case now Altice, used to be Cablevision, they give each municipality two stations free. Okay. One station is government and education. And the other station is public access, where do all, we do all these types of shows. The government channel, we tape live every town board meeting, the zoning board, the planning board, the trustees, the architectural review board, both in the town and the village, and uh, all the schools. If schools have board meetings for their particular school board, we, public, we produce them and broadcast them live. So this is a way for the community to get involved and know what's going on. I think that's a great thing. On our channel here that we're on today, we can also do politics. So we've done all the debates, mm -hmm, whether mm -hmm. it's for Congress or for the local or for state or governor, we can have debates here. So it's a forum for the community to also present those types of things, candidates. They can't raise money, you know, we're a not-for-profit, but all those things that are valuable that you need to know is something that we give the community. So. Which is really so important because when you live in a community, you obviously want to know what's going on in that community and what your government officials are doing. And um, I think it's very important that we have that access. And I thank LTV Studios and LTV TV <laughs> for doing all of this. Now, um, the COVID-19 pandemic, and all of us have truly been hit by this terrible, terrible pandemic, and with so many millions and millions of people across the United States out of work, and so many problems, and, and so much fear. What have you done? And I understand that LTV had a show every single day during the pandemic, and and now that you're doing, now that the, the pandemic has sort of slowed up a little, we have fewer and fewer cases, I understand that you're doing it once a week. But tell me about what did you, what well, was the it program was, all about? It was a shock to the system because yeah. now we had to be separated. People were locked in at home or staying at home to be safe and to protect themselves and For others. Sure. And that meant the town board meetings where they all sit at the thing and everybody comes and sits in the audience now couldn't happen. So our staff jumped on this issue and immediately were able to do sort of a Zoom meeting so that the town board members could have their town board meetings right from their homes and discuss live, just like their regular meetings were, all the issues and people could call in. I mean, it was amazing. We were the first town to do that, so I'm very proud of the staff here. And then 
because the news was constantly changing, and, and sometimes the other stations, the regular stations, they do more broad-based. Mm -hmm. Well, this team here started a show called Facts at Five. And every day at five o'clock for 15 minutes and then a guest shot for another 15 minutes, they gave all the information on statistics for East Hampton, the hospital, our hospital in South Hampton, right. not all the hospitals in the area. So it was wonderful and very well received. So we ran that for about two or three months. And then as it slowed down, well, then we switched it to uh, lesser time. Once a week. And um, we interviewed the supervisor every week. We in interviewed the assemblyman, the senator, our congressman. I mean, it was constant information live right to the people in East Hampton. So very we were important. very proud of that. Very, yeah. very important. And I understand that I've been here uh, when you rented out the space to different groups. I actually recently in February, just before the pandemic began, I was here for the Ellen Hermanson Foundation. They had a big party here, a fundraiser. It was a lot of fun and uh, there were different performances, I remember, because you have a stage in a building. and. It was absolutely wonderful. So this place is available to rent out for individuals. Say I wanted to have a big party, which I can't do now. Right. Um, but say in, in a year from now, hopefully when this pandemic ends, I could rent the space out or my family could or anyone could. Is that correct? Absolutely. We have a great facility here. We have three studios, Studio 1, 2, and 3. And one of them is what we call the big black box, which is where you saw yes. that event. And we can transform that into many different things, you know, with decorating, just like we can do here with the way the studio looks. And you had great lighting, I remember. Yes. Any oh, kind of have, lighting you wanted. Yes. And of course, you're a, a, a TV studio, so you should <laughs> know, have great right? lighting, right? <laughs> so all those things, yes. Yeah. So we do a lot of that. Like I said, we had a debate last year, or early this year, for the candidates. And we're one of the largest facilities. We can hold 300 people. There aren't many places in town that have that capacity. So it was wall to wall. It was a great debate. People had a wonderful time and it was broadcast live. So we have great potential and the ability to do many things, including rent and lease to anyone who wants to. We've had performers here that are musical performers. We have our- Seeing them, yes. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. so it, it's just wonderful. So it, we are available and we'll be flexible and help anyone we can. I love That's it here. Job. I feel like it's <laughs> my know, second it home. But we love having you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so now, um, I also heard recently you hired an artistic director and she's creating new programs. Is that correct? Or? Yes. Yes. Um, her name is Angela LaGreca and she used to be with uh, The View Oh. And she was a producer on The View and also with Meredith Vieira's show. And she has a home here. And she's producing a lot of different things to change the content. Because, you know, we're on 24-7, 365. So your show, this show, gratefully, we can play it two or three times a week. You know, I think so you show get it four times There you a go. Week. I know that we do that. So we like to have new content. We mm -hmm. like to have local people give us information and show things that are different and new in the community. And she's got a show called Who's Your Neighbor? where she knocks on the door and interviews three people and what they do. Stephen Gaines was on it. So, I mean, just fun, fun show. Uh, I think she's going to be doing a cooking show with some of the, we have a full kitchen that also allows I've seen to, it and to it's do absolutely it's beautiful. Great, yeah. So we're trying to do what we can bring to the community, show them what's going on that's exciting and new and different and who lives here, what do they do here, who are the philanthropists here, what are the not-for-profits and, and what do they do to help the community. So we're so happy and proud to be able to, to do all that. Well, that sounds like a fun show. So if I get a knock on my door <laughs> one night. Yes, <laughs> and look who's a woman here. With, with a microphone, I should say, oh, hi, Angela, I'm here, I'm ready for an interview. Who's your guest? <laughs> it'd <laughs> be fun. Let me go fix my hair. Yeah, no. No, it'd be fun, it really that is be, fun. So That's interesting, but of course she uh, tells the people beforehand oh, that she's course. coming you know, over, she just done. doesn't, yeah. it's not and like it's, um, the old fashioned full of brushmen who'd come knocking on your door trying to sell you um, whatever. I know. Um, so now this is so much fun and I really enjoy being here and 
I think that what you do for the community is absolutely extraordinary. Now, of course, you're a non-for-profit. Yes. Or not-for-profit, so you need yes. to raise funds. Are you government-funded, or are you primarily privately funded? How does this all happen, and how do you pay for everything? <laughs> well, it's, we try very hard, but we do. The cable vision contract that the town has with the provider, the service provider, allows a part of that franchise fee to go to the municipality. Mm -hmm. Now, in this case, the municipality funds us with part of that franchise fee. So we get a portion of that money, and that's how we operate. But then you still have to fundraise, correct? Yes, yes, we do. We fundraise. We rent studio space. We rent these places. For example, uh, we're very close with Guildhall. So, Which I love, and we've yes. had on So Right, so the we show. work well with all the not-for-profits out here. And Guildhall sometimes will want to do some um, practice for their shows and for what they do, and they need space. So we will sometimes rent them the studio so they can do their practice and their rehearsals and all the things that they need to do. So we work like that. We charge them minimally. You know, it's not something, it's almost a mutual thing. And, and we help that way. So that's how we end up raising a lot of our money. We also always ask anybody who would give us a donation would be wonderful. We always appreciate that. And, and so now for our viewers, if you're enjoying LTV, which I'm sure you are, you can be helpful. Now, as I said before, a philanthropist, they can donate their time, and of course they can make donations. And for the viewers, she's going to give us the website in a minute. Diana's going to give that. But remember, even the small donations, $5, $10, $20, $50, 100 of course, 1000 5000 10000 a $1 million, <laughs> it all adds up, and it allows this to continue. So. Diana, what is the website for our viewers uh, to donate? Very easy. L-T-V-E-H dot org. L-T-V-E-H dot org. And that stands okay. for East Hampton. So local television access. Yeah. So nice. it's, it's, it's wonderful. And, and we've had volunteers here. We had a couple of well, comedy I specials. Hear, I want to yeah. learn all about your volunteers because part of being a <laughs> philanthropist is volunteering. Now, of course, if you're in a situation where you have absolutely no time, but you're making billions of dollars or hundreds of millions or millions of dollars and you want to donate, well, well, we'll give you the title of philanthropist, too. But for those who don't have the resources, and right now with so many people out of work, it's difficult. How can we help here? What can we do to be volunteers? Well, we have volunteers. When we have events, we had a couple of fundraising events that we, Angela and, and the team here coordinated. And, you know, putting out chairs, changing things, getting tables ready, all those things, uh, taking tickets at the door, normal things that aren't really hard labor, you're not digging pools, but that helps us when we have events or we have two or three hundred people is always, always a tremendous help for us. So Good. And you have something called LTV Salon. What is that exactly? Well, <clears throat> before the pandemic, probably about once a month or every two months, we'd have a salon, which is a very laid back evening. People $10, $20 donation, they come in, we had comedy acts, we had readings, Joy Behar was here doing readings of some of the plays she's writing, musicians that would come and you know play music, and those evenings were fun, because it was all different stuff, very loose. Fun. And, uh, yeah, and it was hosted by Angela, and they were great. But of course the pandemic put a stop on, on all gatherings like that, but, but they were fun, and we very much enjoyed them. So do you have any fundraisers planned moving forward or anything like the salon? In, in terms of timing, what are we looking at? What do you think? Or actually, I guess we don't know. With this pandemic, we know nothing right now. Exactly. And hopefully, uh, we won't have a second wave in the fall. I hope not. I hope not and, either. And we look, I mean, we're planning. A lot of organizations are doing different things. You know, they're doing fundraisers on Zoom. But we do have a very small staff. We only have about five or six people here really? that run this. And Seems uh, like a lot several, more when I'm here. And they do an amazing <laughs> job. I, I, job. I marvel at what they do, really. And we have um, a lot of part-timers that do all our evenings that do the town mm -hmm. board meetings, mm -hmm. that are videographers that mm -hmm. set up and do all the meetings live. So there's not a huge staff to do that. So sometimes we need volunteers or people who want to be philanthropists and maybe host little fundraisers for us at some point. 
but with the pandemic right now we've you know we've said let's we'd rather be safe and maybe give the community information like this and the facts at five that we did mm -hmm. so we really want to know that we're reaching out and doing stuff community-based yes and i've noticed that you've been extraordinarily careful with everything and when you come into this building you must have a mask on they have hand sanitizer <laughs> out and everybody's watching you making sure <laughs> you don't take your mask off of course and you're when six feet apart we're six feet <laughs> apart yes and i think it's all so important and i think right now um, with this pandemic we know so little we don't know what the future is going to bring and actually no one does so we have to all be very careful and continue to follow uh, government guidelines which are mask social distance and keep washing your hands and it's not so terrible and we'll survive we'll get through this and we need to support one another tell me a little bit about you diana outside of this right now it's such a difficult time and we have to show compassion and you mentioned that you're involved with other charities you mentioned something called dress for success yes what is that all about and i don't want to get off the subject of ltv no. studios but i think right now with this terrible pandemic we need to show compassion and any one of us you know we think well i can't do anything but we all about clothing, giving away clothing, right? Yes, that um, someone else might be able to use for a job interview or, that's, that's or exactly, for work. That's exactly mm -hmm. what we do. We do Dress a makeover, mini makeovers with donated clothing and, and people donate. This is Dress for Success. Yes. People okay. donate the most amazing things, tags on, never used, Ralph Lauren, I mean, Michael Kors, <laughs> shoes. So we have 50 volunteers there. These are women that go through the clothing, make sure we pick the appropriate things that are still in good condition, nice. that are very special. And we outfit women for their interviews because some of these women are very poor or they're coming from conditions where they, they don't have proper well, it's a hard business time. clothing. Right. And they leave and it's all free of charge to them. They leave a million bucks. We have before and that. after pictures. Mm -hmm. So that's a great charity. And we also do job training, career so, placement training. Nice. Well, maybe I'll have a representative from Dress for Success like you or someone <laughs> else on great. the show. Yeah, yeah. And as we know, LTV Studios is servicing this entire community. And with us, I have Diana Ware. She's the chairman of the board of LTV Studios. She does an extraordinary job, and, and this group does a great job. Diana, if I wanted to have this show every day, could I do that? Yes, you could. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And You could. We are, and, we're honored to have you. This oh, is a so great sweet. show. Thank you. We love it. Well, I think any time that we can help one another and even be a voice for those that can't be a voice, it's something great and that's what you do here at LTV Studios which is just extraordinary and um, I see also you have interns here yes. from time to time so if if someone wanted to learn a little bit about um, TV operations they could uh, perhaps put Absolutely. in an application. We do that with the schools here we have a lot of time that we work with the schools and they come and do their own little videos. So the videos. children come in. Yes. So, so you have that. an educational aspect yes. for children, which I love because we must focus on the next generation. If we don't teach young children to be philanthropists, we won't have them. So you're doing that and we and do you're that as well. And we also do. do producer classes. So any member of the community who wants to learn how to use a camera, how to frame it, what to do to be able to produce a show, they can do a show on their own at home or anywhere as long as it's uh, processed properly and it follows all FCC guidelines and we'll put it on TV. Now are you doing it now, the yes, producer classroom? Yes, we have producer classes. Are class you doing it virtually schedule. now or? Uh, well, we haven't done it in a few weeks, but yeah. they will have a schedule where it comes on. Pandemic kind of, you know, hurt a lot of different uh, things. Everyone. But the producer classes are fun. You learn how to be a TV producer. You learn how to film. I like that. And it's, it really is, is enjoyable. So you could do a cooking show at home and give it to us and we would put it on TV. So that's the kind of things we want from the community. We want them to be out there doing things in Montauk, doing things at the fishing pier, doing things at the schools, the playgrounds, and give them to us. And, and we will oh, I think it's we wonderful. put them on TV. Yeah. And what about fashion? I'm, I'm a fashion lover, and right now the fashion industry's had an incredibly difficult time. And you might say, well, 
who's out there buying clothing now during a pandemic? But quite simply, if we don't support the fashion industry, there are millions and millions of people, tens upon millions, in the entire world that lose their jobs because no one's buying anything. So maybe someday you'll do a fashion that show and maybe fun. that'll be something I might get involved with because I'm a real fashion lover. We have a few minutes left. What else would you like to tell our audience about LTV that we haven't touched upon? We've, you're such an interesting woman, a philanthropist who's done so much and truly loves the arts and, and you love people. And I, I do. And, and I think and that's the key also to being a philanthropist. If you love people, a philanthropy is the love of mankind and everything and every living being on this earth. And then, of course, the environment. So exactly. We have one a minute left. We have a great <laughs> show that Del Cullum does. He's one of our nature wildlife protector guys that goes out and saves animals and love takes it. care of them. And he does a beautiful show on LTV as well. Our staff is amazing. And, and for people like you and Del Cullum, whether it's the environment or the ocean or cooking or shopping or whatever, we want to be there for the community to let them have their voice in I, anything they do. We love people. Everybody's worthy. So every charity, people are out there giving time, giving effort, giving their knowledge. That's wonderful because it, it really costs nothing but means so much to an organization. If you're an accountant and you can be on a board and help them kind of how to yes. do the numbers, all those things are I love it. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. Thank you so much for joining us and we thank Diana Ware, Chairman of LTV Studios, for joining us. See you next week.